Uh, welcome back. So today we are going to be talking about some oxygen not included beginner tips that might help you out in the very beginning of the game when you're first getting your colony set up. Today we're actually going to be talking about early game bathroom setups. So bathrooms are actually going to be a pretty important thing for you in the beginning of the game because obviously your dupes need to poop. Um, so your beginning setup might look something just a tad bit like this where you're gonna go ahead and have your two bathrooms here and a wash basin so that they can wash their hands when they leave this being so that you know obviously they do not get food poisoning we don't want our dupes to get food poisoning that's terrible and so that's I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of work here while I'm while I'm talking and so basically these wash bins don't require and these outhouses don't require any kind of plumbing whatsoever they use the outhouses once they're full they need to be emptied and then they produce polluted dirt same with these wash basins they get filled up with clean water um, once the clean water is completely used it gets refilled and then polluted water comes out and then you have to do something with that polluted water now it's pretty common practice for someone to make a small hole let's say where you just dump your polluted water into and kind of forget about it <laughs> but we don't want to do that you know we want to be more productive we want to be more efficient plus we don't have want to have to worry about having a constant source of water so today we are actually going to go over closed water bathroom systems that do not require any additional water how does that sound that sound uh, pretty enticing to set your bathrooms up once and never have to think about the water ever again. Does that sound interesting to you? Because if that's what, uh, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, today's video is exactly, exactly the one that you were looking for. So, like I said, your basic bathroom setup is going to look something like this. Oh, look at this. You know, I've never, I've never actually noticed that they have these little uh, air fresheners hanging from the outhouse. That's pretty cute. So this is gonna be our basic setup. We're just waiting for them to go ahead and get the pitcher pump so they can fill these waters up. But this is what your, your very starting bathroom is going to look like. So let's go ahead and jump ahead so we can look and see what the next evolution of our bathrooms are going to be. So this is what your next level bathroom is really gonna look like. You're gonna have your sinks, which basically act the same as the wash basins, and you're gonna have your lavatories, which act exactly as the outhouses. The only difference is going to be these require plumbing and will not output any polluted water as the wash basins will nor will they produce any polluted dirt as the outhouses will when they get cleaned so what we're going to need for our closed system is a water sieve we're going to need the lavatories and sinks and we're going to need at least a liquid reservoir and preferably a hydroponic farm so in order to get all of these items, we're only going to need a couple of things on the research tree, and that's mostly going to be in our liquid section. We are going to need the basic plumbing so that we have a liquid pump and the pipes. We're going to need sanitation so we have the lavatory and the sink, preferably the shower too. The shower will work in this system. We will get to that. We're also going to need the water sieve so that we can clean our water and a liquid reservoir in order to bypass the extra water into somewhere where it can go uh, again preferably you should also hopefully have a hydroponic farm tile or we can kind of go into the other ways that we can go use our excess water so basically what we're going to do is let's go ahead and go into our plumbing overlay here i set up a quick liquid pump just so that we have it and we have max here who's running on the hamster wheel so that we have some power in order to do what we're going to do the basic setup is going to be like this clean water comes into the sinks here and the bathrooms and then polluted water will come out of the outputs what we are going to do is we're going to connect our outputs here into the input of our water sieve and we're going to take the output of our water sieve which will put clean water out and put it right back into the system now you might be saying whoa 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 hold on you think you got game um what about the germs food poisoning hello i don't want my dupes to get sick 
Well, funny thing about germs in this game, especially well, with food poisoning in particular, food poisoning, you only really have to worry about it coming in contact with water when the water is being used specifically to create food. So let's say we were to put something here that needed polluted water in order to be irrigated that we were going to eventually eat. That would be bad because food poisoning germs would transfer. However, if it's going towards something else that doesn't really matter, it doesn't, it's okay. Um, it can go into stuff that's making oxygen and you'll get food poisoning germs in the air, but the food poisoning germs in the air don't affect your dupes. They don't hurt you at all. You only really have to worry about it on the surface when they, and when they eat something, because when they ingest it, that's when there is a problem. So when the water is being recirculated into the system, the food poisoning water is just coming back in here to become more food poisoning water. It's actually okay. It's not a big deal. So basically what we're going to do is, like I said, clean water is going to come into here, but polluted water is going to come out here into the water sieve and then here and then in, back in the clean water. The only thing with this is with bathrooms, whenever dupes use a bathroom, they actually produce more polluted water than they actually use in the system. So that kind of will create a problem because if your output um, pipe gets too backed up, these will not function and your dupes will poop their pants. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to set up an overflow and I should have a, a video coming out soon. If you're watching this right as it comes out, if you're watching this in the future, sometime in the future, hello, future you, um, there should be a video that I'm actually going to be releasing pretty soon. You can go ahead and check it out on my channel that talks all about liquid and gas flows. And so what we're going to do here is basically set up an overflow. So when this fills up all the way and this can't take any more input because of this output pipe is full of clean water, we're going to have the output get diverted over to our liquid reservoir right there. And then this water is just eventually going to build up and build up and build up until it's all polluted water. And then this pipe will back up too. And this pipe will all have already been backed up. And then our bathrooms will be screwed. So what do we do? Well, that's where our hydroponic tiles come in. Because early game, this is actually a perfect way to start working on your thimble reeds. You're not going to be eating these, so you don't have to worry about food poisoning germs being transferred. And basically, this is a very, very easy way to get rid of polluted water. In addition, you're going to need thimble reed for things like your Atmos suits. So this is a very important thing to get set up early on. If you can find a slime biome like over here and happen to find a thimble reed, it might well be worth it to dive in there just for that specific thing, just so you can get this going. And thimble reeds are actually extremely, extremely thirsty plants. So they will take up as much polluted water as you need. Um, you don't need to keep feeding them. They will say that they need more irrigation, but this is literally just an overflow for your bathroom. So it's not really important if you want to set up an actual thimble reed farm somewhere else later in your game, you can absolutely do that. So now we have basically our complete infrastructure set up. Again, clean water is going to come through here from out of the water sieve through here, polluted water out into the water sieve. When this output pipe is full, the excess polluted water will come into this liquid reservoir, which pretty much just acts as a buffer so that this pipe never completely fills up. And then we'll go and the extra will feed here so that we get rid of it. And we don't have to worry about having a septic tank to hold it. We don't have to worry about getting rid of that water. So let's go ahead and prime the system here and see how it works. Boom. So now we have clean water coming in here. And perfect. Okay, here we go. So now they're going and they're using the bathrooms. And again, polluted water comes out into the water sieve and clean water is coming in. And if you see, the water is backing up further and further, even though they're only using a certain amount of water, it's because they're creating more polluted water than they're actually creating. And so let's go ahead and fast forward a bit so we can see how the system looks once it's actually overflowing. 
All right, and so we have the bathrooms being used. Last of the fresh water was there. And here we go. If you watch, I went a little fast, but our pipe, our output pipe here is full. So there we go. We have this coming in and this pipe is full. The water sieve cannot take any more liquid because the output pipe is full. So the polluted uh, water is overflowed, comes into our liquid reservoir and out into our thimble reeds. And again, while this is a slow way to grow thimble reeds, it is an efficient way to get rid of excess polluted water and not ever have to think about this again. And the great thing with this is this system actually works in conjunction with showers as well. You can do this with any kind of plumbing technically. So if we go ahead and just hook a shower up here, all we're gonna need is a little bit more water. And so instead of priming the system with fresh water as I did, if you don't have any fresh water available or you have some polluted water available, like I have right here, you could actually go ahead and plumb it straight into the input of the water sieve and that should help prime your pump as well. Once you, all you need is some fresh water in here enough to fill up everything and then you're pretty much good to go. And basically the only requirements for this system is 120, 120 watts of power for your water sieve and sand in order to keep it going. And so this is going to be your basic closed system bathroom where you don't have to worry about water at all. And so what are some other alternates that you can do for this? Well, instead of feeding thimble reeds, if possibly, you know, you're on another biome like the forest biome and you have, let's say the arbor trees, you could definitely throw arbor trees in here and the polluted water will feed those. You don't have to worry about the excess food poisoning germs because you're not going to be eating the trees. They're just going straight into creation of ethanol, assumingly. Oh, and there we go. So we have our water there. But what else can we do with this system, you might ask? Well, funny you should say. Again, if you go ahead and watch my video that's all about how flows work in this game, you'll know that if you add a liquid bridge, this will direct flow for your liquid. However, it will also set it up so that you can do an overflow output like we just did here. So what are some other ways, what are some other things that we can do? Well, now that we have our liquid bridge set up here, we can set up an overflow for our fresh water as well. That way we're not, you know, if we do this, technically we're, we will starve out the thimble reed here because this will never completely be filled because water will be moving somewhere else. However, this is an alternate way that you can kind of do something with your water. So what can we do with water? Oh. Why not set up an electrolyzer? So let's set our overflow here. Oops. Oh, that's crazy. There. So now we have extra water going into our electrolyzer. And oops, we probably need to plug this bad boy in, don't we? And now we have a cheap and easy way to create oxygen. Now, in creating this oxygen, you are also going to create some hydrogen, which can be a problem if it builds up too much. However, if you're early game, you literally, all you have to do is dig a shaft up that way. Just put a, like, like we did here with the ladder that comes straight down, just do a ladder that goes straight up. All of your hydrogen will just completely float up there and you don't have to worry about it until way later in the game when you have to start thinking about hydrogen and having hydrogen and dealing with hydrogen but pretty much you can just let hydrogen float all the way to the top hood up somewhere and never think about it again until you know you need to oh here we go and so we have our polluted water and the extra is still coming out. So this is actually still a good system. I've never actually did a system like this before. So this is a first on You Think You Got Game. And so this is a very, very easy system to set up. Again, all you need are the sinks, the lavatories, you need the water sieve and the liquid reservoir. And if you really need to, an electrolyzer. Just to go over this one more time, clean water comes in from the water sieve Polluted water comes out into the water sieve. When this pipe is full, the water sieve will 
put the excess polluted water into your thimble reed farm here. And because we got a little fancy, we put a little liquid bridge here and any excess water that isn't necessarily needed immediately for the bathrooms. And this liquid bridge will prioritize the water flow this way first so that your bathrooms do get filled up. Any excess water will go and make us some oxygen because why not? It's just extra water and yeah. And it looks like, oh, it doesn't even look like we're creating any germs from that oxygen either, are we? There's nothing here. So, even big of a bonus. So, I hope this helped give you a little bit of inspiration to set up a closed bathroom water system. I hope this helps you make things a lot easier for your beginning of the game because once you have this set up, again, you don't have to think about bathrooms ever again. And this completely scales up. All you need to do if you wanna add more, bat oh, more sinks, more bathrooms, more toilets, just scale it up and make sure you have enough water for it to at least prime and the rest should handle itself and then this will completely stay full the only only thing you have to worry about with this system and i've had it happen to me before is make sure that you always have power coming to this water sieve so if you have it on a manual generator or a hamster wheel up the priority <clears throat> make sure that once this battery hits 35 everyone drops everything and goes down here to make sure that this water sieve is working because if it doesn't have power it won't take the polluted water in <coughs> your polluted water will go out here and you won't be refilling your fresh water once your fresh water completely depletes they won't be able to use the bathrooms and everyone will start using the bathroom all over your base and so i hope today i hope today's video was extremely helpful if it was please consider hitting that like button. If you like what you see here and you'd like to see more, definitely go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And uh, hopefully I'll get some more content out for Oxygen Not Included soon. And thanks a lot. We will see you on the next one. Take care.